Section 12 of Lives of the Ancient Philosophers. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Lives of the Ancient Philosophers by Francois Fenelon. Section 12. Anacarsis. Anacarsis came to Athens in the 47th Olympiad and was killed shortly after his return to his own country. Hence we may conclude that he was contemporary with the majority of the philosophers already mentioned. Anacarsis the Scythian holds no inconsiderable rank among the sages. He was the brother of Cadnidas, king of Scythia, and the son of Nurus by a Greek mother to which circumstance he was indebted for equal facility in the language of both countries he was eloquent and vivacious brave and steadfast in everything he undertook he was always habited in a coarse woolen tunic and he lived entirely on milk and cheese his mode of speaking was concise and energetic and as he never concealed anything he generally gained whatever point he wished to carry his bold and eloquent manner of delivering his sentiments procured the reputation of proverbs for his sentences and it became common to observe of any one who affected to imitate him that he adopted the scythian style anacarsis left his native country in order to take up his abode at athens as soon as he arrived in that city he went to solon's house and knocked at the door on its being opened to him he told the servant to inform his master that he had come on purpose to see him and meant to stay with him some time solon sent him word that a man ought to play the host only in his own country or in places connected with it and Acursus marched in on hearing this well said he to solon you at any rate are in your own country and in your own house and therefore you ought to play the host begin then your hospitality by showing me that you are willing we should be friends surprised at the vivacity of his self-invited guest solon consented with pleasure to his domesticating with him and they entered into habits of friendship from that time which remained unbroken for the remainder of their lives anacarsis was fond of poetry and wrote the laws of scythia and a treatise on war in verse he used to say that the vine bore three different kinds of grapes pleasure intoxication and repentance he was surprised to see that in all the public meetings which took place at athens wise men opened the business but left it for fools to decide upon neither could he comprehend why slanderers and others who uttered injurious expressions should be punished whilst boxers and wrestlers who frequently injured each other by the force and rudeness of their blows should be often munificently rewarded he was no less surprised that the greeks should use small cups at the commencement of their banquets and large ones towards the end when they were beginning to be inebriated he could not brook the license of public feasts being asked what was the best method to prevent persons from giving way to a love of wine he replied place a drunken man before their eyes and let them contemplate him at their leisure he was asked if there were musical instruments in scythia there are not even vines he replied he called the oil which the athlete used for anointing themselves before they began their combats the preparation to make a madman one day calculating the thickness of the planks of a vessel alas he exclaimed so it is that those who trust themselves upon the water are only four inches from death he was asked what vessel he deemed the safest that which has arrived in port he replied he used often to say that every man ought to endeavor to the utmost to obtain complete mastery over his tongue and his appetite he always kept his right hand on his mouth whilst he was asleep in order to show that there is nothing which we ought to watch with so much vigilance as the tongue one day an athenian reproached him with his being a scythian my country may be a dishonor to me he replied but you are a dishonor to your country he was asked what was the best and worst faculty of man the tongue he replied 
it is better said he to have one friend whose fidelity may be relied on than several whose attachment will change with every change of fortune being asked whether he thought the number of the living equal that of the dead let me know first said he in which class i am to reckon those who are at sea markets he defined to be places established by man for the purpose of defrauding each other one day as he was walking in the street a young man insulted him as he passed anacharsis looked him in the face and then coolly said to him young man if you cannot carry wine in your mouth you will not be able to carry water in your old age it was he who compared laws to spider webs and laughed at solon for thinking to restrain the passions of men by written injunctions to anacharsis we owe the invention of making earthen vessels he went one day to consult the priestess of apollo in order to ascertain if there were any person wiser than himself the oracle replied that one mycen of shiraz was wiser anacharsis was astonished at this never having heard of any such person he went immediately to a village to which he was informed he had retired in order to inquire of him he found him mending his plough mycen cried he this is not the proper time for turning up the soil very likely not replied mycen but the proper time for mending anything is as soon as it is broken mycen has been ranked by plato among the wise men he passed all his life in solitude without having any intercourse with mankind having an aversion from his own species he was one day seen in a sequestered nook laughing with all his might being asked why he laughed so heartily when he was all alone for that very reason he replied croesus having heard much of anacharsis made him an offer of money and invited him to sardis anacharsis returned him this answer i came to greece o king of the lydians to learn the language the customs and the laws of the country i have no need of either gold or silver and i shall be quite content if i return to scythia better informed than when i left it nevertheless i shall pay you a visit for i am desirous of being enrolled in the number of your friends after a long stay in greece anacharsis prepared for his return on his way home he touched at Cyzicus and found the inhabitants engaged in celebrating a solemn festival in honor of Cybele, the mother of the gods. He made a vow to the goddess to offer up the same sacrifices and establish the same worship of her in his own country in case of his safe arrival there. Accordingly, on his return, he endeavored to substitute the laws of Greece in place of the ancient ones of his native country, by which he much displeased the Scythians. One day, Anacharsis secretly went into the recesses of a thick forest in the country of Hylia, in order that he might, unperceived, fulfill the vow he had made to Sibylle. He went through all the ceremonies, holding in his hand a tambourine before the statue of the goddess, according to the manner of the Greeks. He was observed, however, by a Scythian, who went straight to the king to inform him of all he had seen. The king immediately went into the forest and surprised his brother, Anacharsis, in the act of worship. He drew his bow and pierced him to the heart with an arrow. Anacharsis expired, exclaiming, in greece whither i only went to instruct myself in the learning and manners of the country i was suffered to remain unmolested in my native land ignorance and envy have aimed at me a mortal wound after his death many statues were erected in different countries in honour of his memory End of section twelve.